good day everyone welcome to another lecture of operating systems so in this particular lecture we will review what we did in our last lectures related to paging and we will see what are the limitations of this paging scheme and how we can solve those limitations okay so basically we said that paging is a technique that is used to implement or we can say that is required to implement memory virtualization or we can say the virtual memory okay so what is done in the paging that for every process every process assumes that it has a memory that ranges from 0 to some space m okay so it every process assumes this that it has a memory from 0 to m okay and this memory that it is assuming is it is virtual memory okay. but we already know that we have a single physical memory and we need to map this virtual memory of a process into it is physical memory fine so what we are going to do what we are doing in the paging is that for every process we are dividing it as virtual address space into pages okay and then what we are doing we are mapping these pages into this physical memory fixed size blocks which are called frames okay so what is done in the paging in the paging we are dividing the virtual address space into pages okay we are dividing the physical address space into frames then we what we are doing we are mapping these pages into frames fine and for every process we are storing this mapping the mapping of virtual pages into physical frames this mapping is stored in a table which is called page table And we already know that this particular page table, it is the operating system data structure. That means operating system stores this particular page table. So for every process, there is a page table. And this page table is indexed by the virtual page number. And it stores the physical page number or we can say physical frame number. Fine. So what is happening that if we have a virtual address or we can say the process generates a virtual address, we convert this virtual address into physical address and how it is converted from virtual address to physical address. This virtual address first goes to the memory management unit. This memory management unit divides this virtual address into two parts. One is the virtual page number. The second part is the offset. Okay. Then what MMU does is that it then goes through the page table. Or we can say it accesses the page table. And it goes to this particular entry, VPN entry. From that particular entry, it will get the physical page number. Or we can say physical frame number. Then what it does is that it combines this physical page number with this offset and this will be our physical address, Finest, final physical address. Fine. Okay, let me reiterate those steps. What is happening when we, con when we are converting a virtual address to a physical address? So we have a virtual address. Fine. Virtual address goes to memory management unit. Okay. So what virtual memory management unit does is that it first converts this virtual address into virtual page number and offset. It divides it into virtual page number and offset. Then what it is going to do first part is that it accesses CR3 register or we can also say page table base register to get 
बेस एड्रेस ऑफ पेज टेबल सो दीज थिंग्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन अवर लास्ट लेक्चर सो दैट इज वाई आई एम रिविंग इट वेरी फास्ट सो it accesses cr3 register to get the base address of page table so that means it guesses the it gets the page table of this particular process which has generated the virtual address so what is there in the page table in the page table we have stored the mapping of virtual address to physical address the second part that it is going to do it accesses the page table okay and it goes to this particular entry which is indexed by this vpn this particular entry from this particular entry it will get the physical frame number or we can say physical page number okay then what it it is doing using this physical frame number physical frame number it combines this physical frame number to get the offset and this physical frame number plus this offset it gives us the physical address then the last part is it accesses memory using this physical address to get the data so this is the entire procedure that is followed when converting a physical address to uh, sorry virtual address to physical address and getting the data from the memory so you can see that we needed some data from the memory so there was this particular address okay and we converted this address into physical uh, address and then accessed the memory now during the conversion of vertical uh, virtual address to physical address you can see see we are doing memory access here why we are doing a memory access here because we have to access the page table and page table is stored in the memory and then again we have to do memory access here and why we have to do memory access here because after getting the physical address we have to get the data from the memory so that means for every memory access because of this paging technique there is one extra access there is one extra access to be done and why is this particular why is there an extra access the extra access is required to get the physical frame number okay and this is required to access the page table from where we are getting this physical frame number so this is one of the disadvantage of paging because of this one extra access there will, will be system performance degradation Okay. so this is one of the limitation of this uh, paging scheme so in paging scheme for every memory access we have to do one extra access and you have to keep this in mind why is this particular extra access this particular extra access is required to access the page table in order to get the virtual page number to physical frame number mapping okay so this is one of the limitation of paging scheme we will see how we can sort out solve this problem uh, later in the lecture but you have to remember that one of the limitation of virtual uh, this paging scheme is that there is a need of an extra memory access to be done okay. another limitation if you see with the virtual uh, with the paging scheme is that you can see that for every process we need to have a page table so for every process there is a page table and in our uh, previous lectures we saw that the size of this page table is 4 mb in case we are using 4 kb pages okay and virtual memory is 4 gb so if there is a 4 gb virtual memory and we are using pages of size 4 kb then for every process 4 mb of space is required to store the page table okay so that means if there are 100 processes in the system 
there are 100 processes running for every process we require 4 mb so for 100 processes we need 400 mb of space okay so it means that 400 mb of space or we can say 400 mb of physical memory is just used to store the page tables so this is a wastage of space or we can say we are not able to fully utilize the memory we are using a major portion of this physical memory to store the page tables so this is another limitation associated with the paging scheme so what are the limitations associated the first limitation is that for every memory access we need to perform one extra memory access okay and the second limitation of paging scheme is that the size of page tables is, is huge and we have to save these page tables into the memory so these are the two limitations associated with the virtual memory and we need mechanisms to handle both these limitations so first we will see how we can how we can decrease this extra memory access in case of uh, paging scheme the second solution will be how we can decrease the size of page tables so first we will see the first one part okay we will solve we will provide the solution for the first limitation then we will provide the solution for the second limitation so let's first discuss the first part okay so <clears throat> so we are going to discuss the limitation that we have to access we need an extra access memory access for every virtual address to physical address translation so the solution for this particular problem is translation look aside buffer okay so what i am saying that see what was the limitation the limitation was that we have to do extra memory access so this was the limitation and why was this limitation there this extra memory access is, was because we have to access page table so this was our page table and it was indexed by virtual page number and from this page table page table we were getting physical frame number because of this uh, accessing the page table there is this extra memory access and we can solve this particular problem how we can solve this particular problem see <clears throat> if we store these virtual page number to physical frame number mappings mappings of frequently used pages okay. what i am saying we will store the virtual page number to physical frame number mappings of frequently used pages in a cache near the processor see we already know where is this virtual page number to physical frame number mapping stored in the page table okay so we already know it but apart from this what we are going to do there will be some pages which are most frequently used okay what we will do we will store the virtual page number to physical frame number of those pages in a cache near the processor now somebody will say why can't we store the entire page table in a cache we cannot 
why because the size of a single page table is 4 mb and having a cache of this large size will be cost will increase the cost cost of the chip okay caches are usually they are of 1 kb maximum size or 2 kb so this is the maximum size of ca caches so we cannot store the entire page table in the cache so in a state what we can do we will store this virtual page number to physical frame number of some of the frequently used pages in a cache okay so how, what will be the advantage the advantage is see we we are having a processor this was our processor and this was the memory and this memory contains the page table we already know it that it contains the page table so initially when processor was generating an address that particular address was virtual address okay and for converting this virtual address into physical address we have to access the memory access the memory is that we have to get the page table and from this page table we then convert this virtual address into physical address okay so that means this extra memory access was required for converting virtual address to physical address what we are going to do we will take some of the entries from this page table not all the entries but some of the entries some of the entries from this particular page table and store those entries here in the processor okay so in the processor there will be some small memory which is called which a small memory called cache and this particular cache will store the virtual frame number oh, sorry virtual page number to physical frame number mappings of some of the pages okay fine now having this cache what will be the advantage you can see for example if we have a processor so this was our processor okay so there is this cache and what is this cache storing this cache is storing the physical frame uh, sorry virtual page number to physical frame number mappings okay then we have a memory in memory we have page table okay now processor generates virtual address so virtual address will have two parts virtual page number and offset now what processor is going to do it will first access this cache this particular cache and we already know this cache contains virtual page number to physical frame number mappings but i said that this cache contains only few entries because the size of this cache is very small so we have to see whether this particular entry is stored in this cache or not or we can say whether this virtual page number this particular virtual page number to physical frame number entry is stored in this particular cache or not if it is stored in this cache we will get the physical frame number we don't have to access the memory okay however if this mapping is not present in this particular cache okay so that means we won't get this mapping in the cache then in that particular scenario we have to access this page table to get the map okay so what i am saying that we have a cache so we have a processor it generates physical address sorry virtual address this virtual address is divided into two parts virtual frame virtual page number and offset then it accesses this cache now there are two scenarios the first scenario is mapping is present in the cache so if the mapping is present in the cache what does that mean we will get the virtual page number to physical frame number in this cache so this is also called we will get the cache hit 
cash hit means we will get the data inside the cash and if we get the cash hit that means we will have this virtual page number to physical frame number mapping stored in the cache so from here we will get the physical frame number and we will combine this physical frame number with the offset to get the physical address okay so you can see that if there is a hit in this particular cache then we don't have to access the memory so that means that particular one extra memory access will be gone however if we are not able to get the mapping if the mapping is not stored in the cache so that means there is a cache miss miss means that we are not able to get the intended data into the cache so in that particular scenario we have to access the memory to get the page table and from this page table we will get the from this particular page table we will get the virtual page number virtual page number to physical frame number mapping so that means we will get the physical frame so in case of hit there is no extra memory access however in case of miss there is an extra memory access okay so this particular cache this cache which stores the virtual page number to physical frame number mappings is called translation look aside buffer tlb translation look aside buffer okay so let me repeat it so what is a tlb tlb is a temporary cache cache present at the processor that stores the virtual page number to physical frame number of virtual page number to physical frame number of most frequently used pages okay and we said that in case of a hit there is no extra memory access required so we want that this cache should have a high hit rate okay so the hit rate of this particular cache should be very high now we have some questions or some queries are there that need to be answered the first part that we have to see is how to handle tlb miss so hit means that we get the data in the tlb so fine but what if there is a miss what will happen okay we will see how to handle tlb miss the second part is that we have to see what is the look of each tlb entry so we have already discussed what is the look of each page table entry okay so each page table entry is like this it has the physical frame number plus some extra bits so these extra bits are for example valid bits protection bits and many other different things or present bits okay so we already discussed those extra bits so this is the structure of page table entry okay but we have to see what is the structure of tlb entry okay the third part that we have to discuss is what happens if tlb is full when the tlb is full translation look aside buffer is full or we can say the cache is full what happens at that particular time so we have to discuss all these three scenarios 
but before discussing these scenarios let me give one another advantage of tlb so see let's say we have a tlb and this tlb has 100 entries let's say for example 100 entries are there we already know that every entry entry stores what is every entry storing it is storing virtual page number to physical frame number mapping okay in other other words we can say every entry stores the mapping of one page and let's say the mapping of one page or we can say the size of one page is 4 kb okay so if i have a single entry stored in the tlb that means whatever data i am accessing in this 4 kb for every data i will get this virtual page number to physical frame number mapping inside this tlb so every entry can handle 4 kb of data okay likewise if there are 100 entries that means how many how much data can be handled by those entries 400 kb of data and if my process is only accessing this data okay this amount of data or we can say if it is accessing only 400 kb of it is virtual address space so if it is handle accessing only 400 kb of this virtual address space or we can say the memory footprint memory footprint of a process is within this particular space then it will get all its virtual page number to physical frame number mappings inside the tlb okay so i hope you got this what i am saying that every entry stores virtual page number to physical frame number and we know that every page is of size 4 kb so that means whatever data I am getting, uh, I am trying to get from this 4KB, I will be able to get the virtual page number to phys physical frame number in the TLB. And if there are 100 entries, that means I can store the mapping of 100 pages. 100 pages means 400 KB of data. Okay. And you can see see for example if uh, if i was trying to get some page or if i was trying to access some virtual address okay so accessing a virtual address that means i have to get the virtual page number to physical frame number mapping okay and i can get this virtual page number to physical frame number from the tlb I can get it is not always possible so sometimes there may be a miss also okay so if I am getting this virtual page number to physical frame number mapping from the TLB so that means I have stored the mapping of one particular page that is of size 4 KB so whatever data now I am trying to access from this 4 KB I will be getting the virtual page number to physical frame number mapping in the TLB itself I don't have to access the page table for this particular page okay so i hope you understood this particular uh, discussion related to the tlb now we will see how we can handle the tlb miss and what is the look of each tlb entry and what happens if tlb is full okay so let's see how to handle miss So handle TLB miss means that we uh, some there was some instruction, some instruction was running, and this particular instruction generated a virtual address. So that means it was trying to access some address. Okay. Now we have to convert MMU has to convert this virtual address into physical address. So it goes to MMU. Now the first part that MMU does is that it accesses the TLB. So what is there in the TLB? TLB contains the 
virtual address to physical address mapping so there are two scenarios the first scenario is that there is a hit hit in the tlb so if there is a hit in the tlb what does that mean we will get this virtual page number to physical frame number mapping okay and if we are able to get the virtual page number to physical frame number mapping we can easily convert this virtual address to physical address okay so after converting virtual address to physical address then we will access the memory access memory to get data at location p on this we are accessing the memory to get data at this physical address then we will return that particular data to this instruction then instruction will move forward okay so this is the first part when there is a hit in the tlb however if there is a miss in the tlb okay. miss means that the mapping of this particular page to which this virtual address belongs is not present in in tlb okay so we already know that this virtual address is a part of some page okay and that particular page mapping is not present in the tlb so if it is not present in the tlb where it will be it will be in the page table okay fine so we have to access the page table so that means access page table fine access page table means this page table is stored in the memory so that means we have to access the memory so from this page table we will get virtual page number to physical frame number mapping okay then what we are going to do let's let's stop here but before going forward let's see who goes to the page table what i mean to say who handles the miss who handles the miss so we will come again to this particular discussion this particular discussion but let's see who handles the miss so there are two possibilities the first possibility is let's make hardware responsible to handle the miss so hardware will handle the miss and the second possibility is software will handle the miss so at tlb where hardware will handle the miss such tlb is called a hardware mapped tlb and the tlbs where software will handle the miss are called software mapped tlbs okay so what will happen in the hardware uh, mapped tlbs so when there is a miss okay so there is a miss in the where is the miss in the tlb so when there is a miss in the tlb hardware will will walk through the page table so that means hardware will access the page table so this page table is stored in the uh, main memory okay hardware will walk through the page table it will get the mapping of this particular page so it will get the virtual page number to physical frame number mapping from the page table we already know that this particular mapping was not present in the tlb that is why there was a miss okay then after getting this virtual page number to physical frame number mapping it will update tlb with this 
new mapping so it will take this mapping and it will place this mapping into the tlb then after placing this mapping into the tlb it will reiterate the instruction it will reiterate the instruction again what does that mean it will reiterate the instruction again or we can say it will restart the instruction again so let us go back here so there was an instruction okay it generates virtual address virtual address uh, or we can say this virtual address was part of some virtual page okay and it was not able to get that virtual page number to physical frame number mapping in the TLB. So there is a miss. Okay. So first let us see the hardware, hardware map TLB, what we are doing in hardware map TLB. So when there is a miss, the hardware will access the page table. So from the page table, it will get this VPN to PP, uh, PFN mapping and it will take this VPN to PFN mapping and it will place this mapping into this TLB. Okay. Now this mapping will be present in the TLB. Then it will restart this instruction. Restart instruction means again it will generate this virtual address. Now it will access the TLB. Now we already know that we have updated the TLB. Updated the TLB means the virtual page to which this particular virtual address belongs, that particular mapping will be present in the TLB. So in that particular scenario, now there will be a hit and it will get the virtual page number to physical frame number mapping. It will convert into the physical address and then it will access the memory. Okay. So this is what is happening in the hardware mapped TLB. Now let's go to the software mapper TLB. So what is happening in the software TLB? So there is a miss in the TLB. Okay. So when there is a miss in the TLB, MMU will generate or we can say MMU will raise an exception. MMU is a hardware. So that means hardware is raising an exception. And we already know whenever a hardware raises an exception, this particular exception is handled by an operating system handler. Okay, so in the operating system handler, there will be one handler, handler that is handling TLB miss. Okay, so this handler, this uh, handler that handles TLB miss, it accesses the page table and it gets the virtual page number to physical frame number mapping. And then using this particular mapping, it will update the TLB and then it will restart the instruction. Okay. So both are clear hardware mapper TLB hardware handles the miss TLB miss and in software mapper TLB software maps the software handles the miss. Okay. So in both these scenarios, the instruction that has resulted in the TLB miss, that particular instruction has to be restarted again. And you saw that in case of a miss, in both these scenarios, we have to access memory to get the virtual page number to physical frame number mapping. Okay. So that means there is that particular one extra memory access in case of a miss. So to have an effective TLB, we want that it is hit rate should be greater than 99%. So that means 99% of timers, it should be able to get the mapping inside the page table because if there is a miss, there is a miss penalty associated. We have to do these many things 
to handle the miss and this has a miss penalty miss penalty means that it takes some extra time and taking that extra time will result in the degrade degradation of system performance okay so we completed how to handle tlb miss so i hope it is clear with everyone now we have to see what is the shape of every tlb entry what is there in the tlb so we have a tlb entry so this is our tlb entry this is one particular entry okay <clears throat> so this particular entry what it is doing is that it stores the virtual page number and physical frame number plus some extra bits virtual page number physical frame number plus some extra bits okay so what are these extra bits extra bit is one of the extra bit is valid bit valid bit means whether this particular entry is valid or not so if this value is 0 0 means this is an invalid went, uh, entry that means this mapping is not correct the, or we can say this particular entry is free it is not used by anyone else if the value is 1 1 means this entry is a useful entry that means it contains useful information it contains vpn to pfn mapping okay so there are some extra bits for example permission bits Permission bits means the mapping of the uh, there is a mapping from page to frame. So that means whether this particular page or whether this particular frame is read only or write only or executable. What are the features of this particular page? The third part that is stored in these extra bits is the application or we can say address specific identifier. address specific identifier we will see what is this address specific identifier after some time so this is the shape of this particular uh, tlb entry so this is the shape of tlb entry. okay so this is the only part that we have not discussed we will discuss it after some time so let's see for example what happens on context to switch Context switch means when we are changing the processor from one process to another. So let's say process 1 is running. Okay. Currently process 1 is running. So that means the TLB, TLB contains the entries or we can say contains the mappings, mappings of this page of this processes virtual page number to physical frame number these mappings are stored in this particular tlb now when there is a context switch so that means in a state of p1 now i have switched to another process p2 now p2 is running what will happen to these particular entries the entries which are stored in the tlb we know those entries belong to p1 should we keep those entries here in the tlb or should we remove those entries remove means should we flush the entries flush the tlb okay what should we do let's say somebody will say we will keep the data keep the entries in tlb so we kept the entries in the tlb now let's say process p2 generated some virtual address so from this virtual address we will get virtual page number now we have to convert this virtual page number into physical frame number so what it is going to do it will first go to the tlb it will find whether this particular virtual page number to physical frame number entry is present or not but we already know that these entries belong to process p1 how should my process p2 knows that these these are not my entries but these are entries of some other process okay so if process p2 assumes that it is not it is it is his entries then it will get this mapping but this mapping will be wrong because these mappings are for p1 not for p2 okay 
so keeping the entries have a problem so what is the problem the problem is we should know which entries belong to whom and we can solve this problem how we can solve this problem if with each entry we add the process identifier process identifier means to which process to which particular process this particular entry belongs so that was this address specific identifier so with every entry there will be some extra bits those extra bits will say to which particular process this entry belongs and those extra bits are called address specific identifier so when process p2 is running it will search this tlb but it will search only those entries which belong to this particular process p2 and how will it know that which entries belong to this particular process from this application specific identifier okay so let's say we have uh, 10 processes that means uh, and we have a tlb of 100 entries so let's say we are dividing these entries equally so every process will get 10 entries 10 entries means how many page mappings it can store 10 mappings it can store and each mapping is of size 4 kb so that means uh, mapping is of size here i mean to say that each page is of size 4 kb so that means nearly 40 kb of address uh, or we can say memory footprint can be stored can be stored in tlb see if we gave entire tlb to only one process so that means only one process has how many entries 100 entries okay and the second scenario is that if we divide the tlb entries among processes then how many entries each process is getting 10 entries okay so for a process with 100 entries and a process with 10 entries will there be where will be the hit rate more okay in this particular scenario or in this particular scenario so we know that hit rate will be more in the scenario where we have more entries for a process having lesser entries for a process will have a problem that there will be less hit rate so the first problem was that on a context switch let's keep the entries in the tlb however we should differentiate which entries belong to which process and that can be differentiated by adding this address specific identifier and we said that having using this particular scenario every process will get some of the entries from this tlb having these some of the entries will result in decrease in hit rate decrease in hit rate means decrease in performance so the first option has some benefits but it is not performance efficient so we won't keep the first uh, we won't use the first option so what was the first option on context switch keep the entries in tlb but we should know which entries belong to which process that is solved with the help of address specific identifier but this particular option has a problem that it results in decrease in hit rate so let's go to the second option the second option is option 2 on context switch flush the tlb okay what does that mean if process p1 was running so that means in tlb we will be having entries of process p1 only so entire tlb belongs to process p1 but when there is a context switch p2 what we are going to do we are going to flush this tlb flush this tlb means that we will make all the valid bits zero making all the valid bits zero means all the entries will be free now this tlb entire tlb will be used by p2 okay so that means it will fill this tlb with the entries with those entries vpn to ppn entries pfn entries okay now this tlb belongs to p2 now again if there is a context to switch from p1 p2 to p1 
okay so we will flush this tlb and now the tlb will contain the entries of p1 okay so this particular scenario have the advantage the advantage is that entire tlb belongs to one process how are the disadvantages what is the disadvantage disadvantage is that on context switch we will lose lose the previous context of a process what does that mean we will lose the previous context of a process so when p1 was running so that means it has filled this tlb with those entries that it was using or we can say it filled this tlb with those pages that it was using most frequently and when when we switched from p1 to p2 we removed those entries okay now again when we are switching from p2 to p1 it won't be able to find those entries here because we have flushed it here so again it has to fill those entries with the most frequently used pages okay fine so yeah, the disadvantage is that on context switch we will lose the previous context of a process and there may be there will there may result in the misses more misses will occur on on the context switch however the advantage is that after filling this tlb there will be less number of misses because the entire tlb belongs to one process okay so what i am saying that on context switch what will happen with the tlb we saw that there are two options option one was keep the entries but with every entry add application specific identifier that means which entry belongs to which process okay and this particular uh, scenario was having the advantage that we won't lose the context but the disadvantage that it will result in miss rate increased miss rate okay the option 2 is flush the tlb on context switch okay and this particular uh, scenario has the advantage that entire tlb belongs to one process we don't have to store any application specific identifier but the disadvantage is that when we are switching from one process to another process we will lose the context lose the context of previous process so this is what happens on the context switch now the last part that we have to discuss for the tlb is the scenario when tlb is full so what does that mean let's say i have a tlb so all the entries are occupied so that means all the entries have valid bit 1 okay let's say process generate some virtual address so this virtual address belongs to some virtual page okay and let's say this virtual page number mapping is not present in the tlb so there will be a miss in tlb and now what will happen on miss in tlb we will go to the page table to get virtual page number to physical frame number mapping and we said that for this after getting this mapping we have to update the tlb update the tlb means that we have to put this mapping into the tlb but there is no entry available in the tlb where we can put this particular mapping so what happens in this particular scenario because the tlb is full and we want to put some another put some another entry into this tlb okay so what we have to do we have to replace some entry so from these entries we will take some entry and replace it okay now the question is which entry should we take there are different entries which entry should we replace 
so there are some replacement strategies and replacement strategies will say which entry you have to replace okay and there are different replacement strategies for example the first is random random means that randomly you can take any uh, specific entry and place th this particular entry there the second is first in first out first in first out means the entry which has come to the tlb uh, earlier should be removed okay the third is least recently used so from these entries we will have some extra information extra information means that it will say which entry was least recently used so the entry which was not used for the la larger time that particular entry will be replaced there are many other different strategies but you should remember that there are replacement strategies random is there fifo is there least replacement um, uh, usage is lru is there so based on these strategies you will decide which particular entry is to be replaced okay so this was all about the tlb and how it solves our problem okay so let me review it and we will close this particular lecture here so what is this tlb so what i said that in case of a paging there was a disadvantage the disadvantage is that one extra access was required for virtual page number to physical frame number mapping okay and this extra uh, access was solved with the help of a tlb so tlb is a cache is a temporary cache at the uh, at the processor and this cache stores the mappings of vpn to pfn of most frequently used pages okay so whenever there is some virtual page number and we have to convert that virtual page number into the frame number what we are going to do we will access the tlb and there are two scenarios the two scenarios are that we will get the entry into the tlb so that means hit is there okay so we will convert this vpn into pfn easily from this tlb we don't have to access the memory the second part was that miss is there okay so if there is a miss miss means this particular mapping is not present in the tlb then we have to access the page table okay now accessing this page table can be done either by hardware so that is called a hardware managed tlb or by the software that is called a software managed tlb so in both these scenarios we will get virtual page number to physical frame number mapping from the page table we will take this mapping and we will update the tlb okay update tlb now the problem is that if the tlb is full okay so in this particular scenario if the tlb is full then we may have to replace some entry if the tlb is full we may have to replace some entry and for replacing we have to decide which replacement strategy to use should we use first in first out least recently used or random or there are many other for example most recently used okay so based on the replacement strategy we replace one of the tlb entry and update it with the new information okay and uh, we said that in case of a context switch if we are doing a context switch we are moving from process 1 to process 2 there are two scenarios the first is we will keep the entries but we should know which entry belongs to which process and for that particular domain we are using application specific identifier the second was that we will flush the tlb so both of these have their uh, advantages and disadvantages Okay. Also, we said that every page table entry will be like this. So, let's suppose this is our TLB. So, let's say for these two entries, the valid bit is 1 and for these two entries, valid bit is 0. 
valid bit is 1 means that these are occupied entries valid bit means 0 means these are free entries so that means if there is some vpn to pfn mapping that is to be stored in the tlb we will find the entry which is available so let's say this entry is available we will place this mapping here and we will make its valid bit as 1 okay so this is our TLB and as I said that every TLB, the structure of the TLB will be that it will store the VPN to PFM. So virtual page number, it will store the virtual page number and the physical frame number and some extra bits. So one of the extra bit is the valid bit, permission bits and application specific identity. So this was all about the TLB. Now in our next lecture, we are going to discuss or we, can, we are going to find the solution. Solution for large page tables. So we said that page tables have a large size. We need some mechanism to decrease the size of page tables. So let's meet in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.